In digital signal processing, we often want to plot a spectrogram, especially a magnitude spectrogram, which is a visualization of how frequencies change in a signal over time. And here you can see a visualization like this of a speech signal. You can see the formats, you can see you know, the fundamental frequency, all of it. So in this tutorial, I want to show you exactly step-by-step step how to create such a spectrogram and how to format it so that it looks nicely and you can save it to a file. If you're interested in just the source code, don't worry, I have put the link to it in the description below. But I believe that if you really want to master digital signal processing in Python, then you need to watch this tutorial in full so that you can take advantage of all the possibilities that these libraries introduce. So let's go with the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a local environment, so a virtual environment, so that we can safely install our libraries without polluting the system in its full. So I'll go in the command line python dash venv, venv, which is the name of the virtual environment that I'm creating. I need to wait until this command completes so that my virtual environment is created. Okay, my virtual environment is created, so I can activate it. It's vnv slash scripts, and I'm using partial, so I'll go activate PS1. Perfect, I can see it here that it's activate, activated, but to check, I can go with pip. Perfect, it's here. And uh, what I now need to do, I need to install the necessary libraries. So let's see, I need pathlib, I need librosa, I need numpy, I need matplotlib, and I need sound file. Okay, our libraries got installed, so now we can create our script, so I'll call it plot spectrogram tutorial.py. And here let's start with our typical Python boilerplate. So if name is equal to main then call main and we define our main function which doesn't do anything right now so as you can see here i got a speech signal from a libri speech database i have put the link to it in the description below and we'll use it to plot a spectrogram so let's go and start with you know, signal sample rate that's uh, thanks to reading of this file and I can read it by finding its path in the data folder and let me copy its name. Okay, and we go, of course, this is sound file and this is path from pathlib, pathlib. Okay, great. And I want to print the sample rate so that I know what the parameters of our plot should be. Uh, you can, of course, you know, you can, of course, automate it however you wish. Uh, but here is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, and uh, finally, what we need to do is we need to simply call, call our function, which we call plot spectrogram and save. And we'll pass in signal, sample rate, and the output path, which will be image slash spectrogram.png. Okay, so this is the signature of our function. Okay. And here we want to have just the output path. Okay, and so the first thing we need to do uh, is we need to calculate the short time Fourier transform. So short time Fourier transform takes our signal and then divides it into chunks. And these chunks are overlapping. Then the STFT windows each chunk so that they are smooth in the time domain, and then calculates the discrete Fourier transform on each and every one of them. And that's everything that Librosa does for us. So let me import 
Lip Rosa. And there's this beautiful STFT function where we can pass in the signal. And uh, then there are, you know, a handful of, of options that we can use, but we don't have to. Just let's see how we roll with the de default parameters. As you can see, this whole function does, does all this for us. So this is the short time Fourier transform, how to obtain the spectrogram for it. So the magnitude of the STFT, well, we need to take the magnitude. So it's spectrogram, it's apply absolute value of the STFT, right? Because STFT is complex values and a spectrogram is real valued. So we need to take the absolute value. And for this, we're using the NumPy library. So it's import NumPy as NP. Uh, okay. And now, you know, displaying these magnitudes, it's still not very useful because they're not in decibels. So typically what's done is we go spectrogram db and then simply librosa amplitude to decibels and we pass in a spectrogram. Okay, this is something that we can visualize and now we can start our visualization. So we go PLT figure and here for spectrograms, I like to pass in the size of 104 so that it's, you know, wider than higher. And then we need to create an image. So that's how we do it with librosa display and we call spec show this is a function to show a spectrogram so we pass in spectrogram decibels and then we specify that we want our you know y-axis as logarithmic this is our frequency axis so you know our hearing is logarithmic it's not linear in frequency and then as an x-axis we want to have the time and here we pass in the sampling rate so it's sample rate and we also pass uh, we can pass in other uh, parameters and this is uh, where it gets interesting maybe let me skip this for now uh, because you can see here we here we have this hop length so here's uh, equal to 512 and let's see uh, here default value of the hop length does it say uh, this one is is 2048 and hop length is win length divided by four and window length is you know by default of nf nf50 but if you change these parameters, and this will happen often, so you change, you know, the size of the FFT, you change the window size, you change the hop size, then, you know, this may need to be adjusted, you know, in your spec show. Just please keep this in mind. I'll show you how to do this in a second. But first, specify the, let's specify the color map. And now, you know, we can try to show it already. And... For this, I just need to import matplotlib pyplot as plt. Okay, and let's go Python m plot spectrogram. Perfect. No, no module name is plot spectrogram. Uh, of course, because this is plot spectrogram tutorial. As you can see, our sample rate is 16,000 Hertz. So the maximum frequency in the signal is 8,000 Hertz. Okay, and then you get this error, then, you know, symbol not found in LVVM. Uh, that's where I found the solution to this. This is like some kind of incompatibility. Uh, well, you need to, you know, uninstall Librosa. That's what you really need to do. So we need to install an older version. So we need to go pip install librosa equals equals 0.9.2. Okay, this worked. And now let's run our 
script again. Okay, uh, this works, that's nice. We just need to import libRosa.display. Import libRosa.display. Okay, perfect. And as you can see, we got our spectrogram. Time, we got here a label hertz, but we can and we will improve upon this. So let's uh, add here the right label. So go X label, it's time in seconds and PLT label is uh, frequency in Hertz. And uh, what we also can do, we can enlarge the font because this one is very small. So as we remember, we can go PLT RC params, update font size to 20. But uh, there's one th thing still here that you know should be corrected. Okay, this uh, looks better. Thing is that that here, you know, it's uh, you know these labels aren't very nice. So they're they're true, okay, but uh, you know these uh, are you know the powers of two. Uh, in my opinion doesn't make much sense to display something like this uh, because we have ready-made you know labels from ISO and here. You know, again, I'm using the trick uh, that I learned from my friend Simon Schwer. So he has, you know, an array of uh, x -tick and x -tick labels that are ready to use. And, you know, you have here specified the frequencies defined by, by ISO, the octave frequencies, and you have their labels. So you can 1K, 2K, 4K, for example, instead of the thousands here. And, uh, you know, what we you, what you can do here is you go plt y ticks okay yeah, they are called x ticks and uh, x tick label okay we can rename them to you know frequency ticks i can maybe remove the x uh, it's not that important right now but the important thing is that you have these arrays somewhere that you can easily access them okay nice and take a look you already have you know an awesome awesome plot time in seconds frequency in hertz perfect what is now left to do is like to display you know what these values represent right because we have okay we have some colors but we don't know what they represent and that's uh, what you do with the color bar function so let's go color bar and you pass here the image and you pass in the format so the format i like to use Is this one because it shows us full decibels no you know no points uh, no 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 decimal places that's what I like to do okay so this is our image uh, one thing that you can check with it is you can change the FFT size, hop size, and window size. And then you can adjust them to uh, Librosa documentation. So let me show you what I mean by this. You can add here additional arguments, like FFT size equal to 2048. And now hop size equal to none by default. And window size also equal to none by default. And you can now handle these parameters exactly as, as Librosa does. So if not window size, then window size is equal to the FFT size. And the same if not hop, hop size, then hop size is equal to window size divided by four. So this means, you know, truncating division to divide by, by um, to, this will be this operation will result in an integer. And then we pass these to Librosa. So say n FFT 
go FFT size. And then hop length is hop size. And wind length is window size. And remember to pass these also to uh, spec show. So here we have hop length equal to hop size. And uh, is there any, yeah, there's a wind length. Okay, we can pass it as well. So it's window size. And is th there's also an FFT. Okay, so let's pass this one as well. Okay, and from the point of view of, uh, of the calling code, nothing should change. But now we, we gained more, more flexibility in that we can, we can now change, you know, these parameters as hop size, etc. For example, uh, what I had here, I had FFT size of 1048. Okay, I can uh, maybe, you know, increase this like FFT size like 4096. Okay, perfect, and the code still works. So as you can see, uh, we now have a longer FFT, which means we have a longer window, and uh, we gain we gain frequency resolution, but we lose you know uh, the resolution in time. So we cannot distinguish events in time so finely as before. So this is uh, you know this trade-off that you that you have with this function. And uh, maybe once again, let me explain what particular arguments mean. So when we, when we have our signals, uh, it is, as we said, it's, it's uh, frames, right? It's chopped into frames and the frames overlap by hop size or hop length, right? So every hop samples, we uh, take a window, right? So we window our signal, that's the window length, because the length of the window with which we separate out this frame apart from the whole signal. And then we have the size of the FFT, and the size of the FFT can only be larger than window length. And if it's larger than window length, then we simply pad zeros. It's to kind of smooth, you know, these, uh, this, uh, frequency uh, to to smooth to gain uh, higher le resolution in you know sampling the DFT, but you know it's not it does not provide higher resolution of the DFT. Uh, to show what I mean here, uh, let's say this is FFT size is by default two thousand forty eight. Okay, so let's specify you know window size that's still two thousand forty eight. But now, by, as an FFT size, let's call 8,192. So I increased the FFT size by four. So now the discrete Fourier transform is sampled more densely, but I have not gained the frequency resolution. So as you can see that uh, it seems to, that, you know, we have more frequency resolution because you know the, in the vertical axis we have uh, smaller smaller spaces going up, but uh, it's still you know just a sample DFT which has a resolution that you know corresponds to the length of our signal. So this kind of artificially oversampled the DFT, but it still has the same resolution uh, because of the window length. Okay, so the final thing that that remains to be done is to save this. And uh, we have this nice output path here. So uh, let me just you know, comment this out because it would close the figure. So first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our uh, output directory exists. Exists. So let's make it here. It can exist already. That's fine. And if it doesn't, then create it and also create all the parents. And then we go plt save fig and pass in the output path. And the nice thing here, what I like to do, I like to change, you know, the stem. So the kind of the file name, the extension, the file name. And I like to uh, pass here, this will be appended, you know, to our 
uh, name and I say the length of the window is window size and then hop length is hop size and then FFT size is FFT size. Exactly. And here also I want to specify, you know, uh, the pic uh, pixels density is 300. Then we want to have a tight box around our plot. And uh, finally, what we pass in that we want to have uh, we can call, you know, transparent background. Uh, so I'll pass into false this time so that you can see the resulting figure. Let's run this again. But if you were to embed this in the PDF, let's say that you would pass in transparent equal to true. As you can see, the image directory got created. And here we change, you know, the name of our file to, uh, you know, to, to this image. Maybe a nicer thing to do would be to pass here the original stem at the beginning. So let me run this again. Exactly, so we have the original spectrogram stem and then we have, uh, you know, the parameters of the spectrogram saved. I actually do it this way because then, you know, I don't forget all oh, with which parameters I did the spectrogram. So it's way, way easier. Okay. Now you understand how to exactly plot a spectrogram, what are the quirks associated with it, and you're ready to use it in your own DSP code. And if you'd really like to master audio programming and digital signal processing, and you're wondering what is necessary to learn it, then I encourage you to check out my free audio plugin developer checklist, which lists every bit and piece of knowledge that I believe is necessary to become a full-fledged audio programmer. If you're interested, head over to dwolfsum.com slash checklist and check what you already can cross off. If you like this tutorial, then please don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for subsequent digital signal processing and audio programming tutorials. I hope that you really enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. And if you'd like to create your own cross-platform audio applications or digital audio workstation plugins, I encourage you to check out Juice. Juice is an open source, cross-platform C++ application development framework that makes it easy to create audio software as well as audio plugins and plugin hosts. You can write code once and build VSC, AU, AUV3, AAX, and LV2 plugins on Windows, macOS, iOS, Android, and Linux, as well as embedded platforms. I've been successfully using Juice since 2018, both in my private and professional projects, so I'm delighted that they're sponsoring the video. I especially like how Juice makes it easy for beginners to jump right into creating audio plugins and applications without worrying about C++ quirks. Juice is used by the majority of the world's most important audio companies, but it is free for personal use and there's affordable pricing available for companies just starting out. Apart from the framework itself, Juice has an amazing community of users gathered in the Juice forum, which is a great resource to learn audio programming on its own. To start using Juice now, go to juice.com, J-U-C-E.com, download Juice, and follow their getting started guide. I have also put the link to it in the description. Thanks to Juice for sponsoring this video, and I wish you, dear viewer, much fun creating audio apps and plugins. Take care.